Hello, this is Todd Luck, and this is a review of Beyond the Father's Star, Warriors of Xandar from American Mythology. This is a brand new comic in their Edgar Rice Burroughs universe. And as you can see, this is officially canon with the Edgar Rice Burroughs novels. This is the first time we've ever gotten Beyond the Further Star in its own comic book. There were some short stories uh, in some of the DC comics back in the 70s, but this is the first time it's ever had its own series. And this is a four issue mini series. You can actually see that right in the corner box. It's gonna be four issues. And normally these mini series have been three issues. So I'm very, very glad to see that expanded four issues that we're now getting. And this is starring Victory Harbin, who is a new character that's currently appearing in the Burroughs Universe novels that are out right now. She first appeared in Carson and Venus Eye of Amtor, a three issue miniseries put out by American Mythology. And she was in the backup stories here, but this is the first time she's had her own uh, full comic book. So that's really awesome. But this isn't the only Edgar Rice Burroughs comic to come out this week from American Mythology. Pelustar Across Savage Seas also came out. And this is connected because Pelustar stars Victory Harbin's mother. And I think will probably tell us the story of how her mother met her father. So that's really cool to see kind of this loose connection between these two titles. You know, this kind of old school feeling universe where you didn't have to buy 70 titles to understand what was going on. You could just buy a couple and you know you could read them on their own but if you bought them both then you would understand you know further and have a richer experience and I really really like that and so let's talk about the cover um, I love the rendering here I love the energy I, it just really draws you in and it's just very dynamic um, and it showcases our main two characters here this is Victory Harbin of course sporting her cool looking suit that she has in the series. And then this is Tyla, I think is the name of the character. If it's Tila, then I probably need to break out my Castle Grayskull and do a different video, but I think it's pronounced Tyla. But anyway, these are our new characters for this series. And we get a little bit of a glance at the planet with all the mushrooms and stuff in, in the back. And, you know, it kind of looks like it has too much negative space here. But actually, if you look close, and this is really neat, you can actually see the other planets in the solar system in the background. That's a really nice touch. I wish it was a little more pronounced because it's really easy to miss, but it's a very nice touch. So I like the cover. I think it does draw you in. The cover and the interior are drawn by Alessandria Rinaldi who did Zorro in the Land That Time Forgot, and it is gorgeous. I love the rendering, I love the storytelling, the design work. Uh, he draws a great Victory Harbin. The colors are really nice too. I mean, this is just a really, really beautiful looking comic book. Not every panel is perfect, but there's just a lot of panels in here. So uh, what you get though is for the most part, really, really great. And so the story begins with a page just explaining the galaxy and the planet that this takes place on. This has become kind of standard for their Burroughs comics that take place on other planets. I think it's a good idea. It kind of sets the expectations and orients the reader. And then it just hits the ground running. Victory Harbin's already on this planet. She meets one of the natives and they can't understand her language. So, of course, they try to kill her. Very quickly, she meets Tyla, who I'm sure will be her very best friend. But at first, uh, Tyla tries to kill her, of course. And we also meet Victory Harbin's animal companion, Hucklebuck. And this is the cover to next issue. I don't want to show you the scene in this issue because it's a great scene. I don't want to spoil it. Uh, I'll just say that Hucklebuck is shown as having a ability that seems to be physically impossible. Uh, but it is something that's very common in comic books and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, you could say that, you know, if it's good enough for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's good enough for the Burroughs Universe. But I think it may also be something that could be explained uh, later 
uh, Victory Harbin uses this thing called an uncertainty gun, which seems to have a different effect every time she uses it, or at least every time we've seen it used. Um, and I'm sort of wondering if it works on quantum mechanics, and I'm sort of wondering if Hucklebuck's ability may also work uh, on the same principle. So I really enjoyed this story. It's nonstop action. Victory Harbin ends up on this planet inexplicably. She gets involved in a conflict between two seemingly primitive tribes, and the story just, again, hits the ground running, never slows down. It's really great. Um, we don't get an explanation as to why Victory Harbin is there or, you know, exactly how her, her gear and stuff work, but I assume that's probably coming next issue. And even if they decide to leave stuff mysterious, I think that's okay. I mean, I can't exactly explain to you how John Carter ended up on Mars, but I still enjoy those stories. So I think a little bit of mystery is fine. But we'll see, you know, how much they reveal. And we also got to remember that Victory Harbin's story is being told in the novels as well. So that may be, you know, set up for, you know, what we're seeing here. And so the concept was conceived by Mike Wolfer, who does the American Mythology, Burroughs Comics, and Christopher Paul Carey, who works over at Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated. And he's a published author and he knows how to write too. And so they came up with a really great concept, Mike Wolfer, himself actually wrote the story for the issue and it just works it really really captures that feeling that you had when you read the uh, beginning of the first John Carter novel or the first Carson of Venus or the first Moon Maid and really just captures that feeling of that earth hero ending up on that alien planet for the first time and trying to figure out what's going on and just really captured that feeling. I never thought I would see that done with a new hero, but it's really, really wonderful to, to kind of add that to the pantheon of Burroughs' interplanetary romances. And so if you're familiar with the original Beyond the Further Star novel, you may be saying, this doesn't sound anything like that novel, and it doesn't. This is set on a new planet named Xandor, uh, in the same solar system, the hero from the novel, Tangor, does not appear. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think, you know, maybe novels may be a better venue to continue Tangor's adventures if they decide to do that. Um, but there's also, you know, if this was a comic book continuing those adventures, I appreciate the fact that, you know, they say it's in canon, right? But even if it has this logo on it, in the back of my mind, because Burroughs started that series but never got to continue it, if they did the further adventures of Tangor, whatever they do, no matter how good it is, I'm going to think, this is nice, but I wonder what Burroughs would have really done with it. With something like this that's completely new, I don't have that thought in my head. So I think it, it's a good thing. I think it's a great story, and I'm certainly, certainly looking forward to seeing where this goes. Will they stay on Xandor? Will they hop on a ship and fly to different planets? Maybe they'll be like the Thelma and Louise of outer space or something. I don't know. But I'm certainly looking forward to wherever they go with this. I highly, highly recommend Beyond the Further Star, Warriors of Xandar number one. It's available right now uh, at your local comic shops. You can get them to order it if they don't have it on the shelf, or you can go to American Mythology's website and buy it off of there. And I also recommend just going ahead and picking up Palooza Star across Savage Seas. I'll have a review of this uploaded today too. Like and subscribe for more videos, and until next time, see ya.